I just realized I don't have anything to drink. I'll be right back. Hi everyone and welcome to another um, podcast episode. Uh, my name is Megan and I will be today talking about my knitting, some new projects that I'm casting on, and then just some stuff, ideas I've got floating around as far as um, what this spring is going to look like as far as knitting. So welcome. I'm so glad you're back. Um, I'm excited to share everything that I've been up to. So let's start with what I'm wearing. Um, in my head, I think I can just do this without having like an outline. No, I need an outline because immediately I'm going to forget what I was going to talk about. Um, so what I'm wearing today, I'm wearing my anchors, my size by Petite Knits. Um, I'll link to her pattern in the thing. And this is the first um, version of this sweater that I made. I then made a second one, also in purple. It was just a darker purple. And when I finished it, I realized they were very similar. And so it's all right. Uh, the yarn that I used for this one, it's real fuzzy, is Surella Yarn. This is from her Knitflix collection from... I want to say maybe a year, year and a half ago. Um, and this is the Friends colorway. It's supposed to mimic the purple of the apartment, the girl's apartment. And I love it. I do like the fit of this um, sweater. I don't think it has short rows. And that's surprising that it doesn't pull up a bunch here. Um, so... That's nice. That's the anchor sweater in Cirilla yarn, and it was a DK um, single ply. I don't think she carries it anymore, and I'm not surprised. It actually pills a lot. Like, this is the first sweater. I made it last spring, and it's the first one that has just pilled like crazy. I have some other ones now that I've made just this winter that are very pilly, but this is the first super wash yarn that I've had that pills. And I think it's just the single ply being bigger and it wasn't a super high twist. And so it just pills a lot, um, which just means I'm depilling it more often, which isn't a big deal. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Um, next we're going to go into finished objects. Um, so I have one finished object to share with you guys today, and then this is a previously finished object, but I pulled these out again for the first time, and I wanted to kind of share them. So last episode, I was almost done with my cottage core, is what I'm calling it, my cottage core sweater, and I finished it. I posted a video of it. It has very long sleeves. I'm super excited. The sleeves come down to about here. Um, and it's cropped, as you can tell this one keeps going, um, because my intention with my intention with this sweater is to wear it over um, dresses this spring when it's still maybe a little bit too cool to just wear spaghetti strap or tank top dresses. Um, it has this beautiful stitch. It's a mock cable. So it's not actually a cable. It looks like a cable, but it's not, which makes it really easy to make. Very quick. You don't need a cable needle or anything. Um, so yeah, so this is my finished object. I haven't, I wore it out one day uh, to lunch and my husband said he really liked it. Um, I was wearing it with just some high-waisted light wash jeans and some boots and it looked really cute and uh, I felt really good in it. So um, I do like that the neckline on this one, if you can see I'm wearing a shirt under here and you can see the peak of my shirt under this neckline, this one will be tighter and you won't be able to see, I wore a t-shirt under it and you couldn't see the t-shirt neckline underneath it because it was just tighter, um, which was exciting. 
and that's kind of what I wanted. It also has the cable coming down the side here. So I'm going to make a project page for this on Ravelry if you're interested on um, seeing some pictures and some more details. Uh, the yarn I used is just some inexpensive opal sock yarn. Um, it's 75% uh, virgin wool and 25% uh, poly, poly made, poly made, which is just nylon, so plastic um, to make it. It's made for uh, socks, so it's very strong. It's very soft. I mean, it's not as soft as this one, but still soft enough that it doesn't bother me at all. Um, did it extra long. So that is my cottage core, cottage core sweater. Also, another finished object that I pulled out that I hadn't worn or even looked at in a while are these beautiful socks. These are the Dreaming of Paris socks by Coqui Locatelli, and. The lace detail at the top, I just washed them and I didn't put them on a sock blocker while they dried. They just kind of dried with all my other stuff. And I wore these and they were actually super nice to wear to the point where I'm like, and I like that I did, I reversed the colors on them. So I'm thinking of making a second pair of these, so the Dreaming of Paris Socks by Koki. Super feminine. I'm thinking of doing like a gray, a gray and blue um, leftover with some, I think that would be nice. So those are my finished objects. Um, up next, we're gonna talk about my works in progress. Works in progress. I am super excited to show you my works in progress. So last time I had been working on, um, or I told you, I don't know if I'd cast it on yet or not, but I told you I was going to make my daughter one of my own patterns. This is the Maglione de Ballerina, which is just ballerina wrap, um, a pattern that I made a while ago. This one is port weight in the pattern. I'll link to it below if you're interested in looking at more pictures. And so I cast it on and I'm doing this one in a DK weight yarn. So I did a couple of adjustments to the stitch count at the neckline and then obviously then made her size that she is now, which is a seven eight. And I finished, I finished the little body, which didn't take very long after knitting an adult size sweater, realizing how little she still is. Um, so I added some ribbing at the bottom. The original pattern doesn't have that. And I put a buttonhole here on the ribbing. And so instead of having the, instead of having the straps that wrap all around, she's just gonna have a button, a button on the inside and then cross it and have a button on this other side because knowing her she's gonna wear it open a lot she's not gonna take the time I didn't want her having them along the strap um, or the tie coming around so it still needs to be blocked and I started on her sleeve I'm trying to make this in time for her little dance that she has her springtime dance it's March 15th and today is March 6th so I have a few days left to work on this and get some sleeves, um, block it, and give it enough time to dry um, before her dance. Drop the ball of yarn. Um, so that's the progress that I've made on this one, the ballerina wrap for my daughter. And I'm working it on US 5 needles, which are, I do believe, 3.75 millimeters. So, and then the yarn I'm using is this made in Japan Odekaya, and it's the excuse me, 
it's their daily and it's a hundred percent merino wool it's non superwash from what i can understand um based off of translating the label i've made several sweaters in this they're very soft they do pill quite quickly and felt um fairly quickly in my last week i shared a gray one the soldotna prop that i made with long sleeves and it, I've worn it maybe two times in the last week, and it has started pilling at the underarm where it rubs. So it does pill and felt fairly quickly, but I do enjoy working with this. Um, so continue working with that. And then I can't remember if I had casted this blue sweater on yet or not, but I cast on, I hadn't because I cast this on March 1st. And that was right after the podcast, um, my last podcast. So here is my current whip. It is the Sheep Camp Sweater by Native Knitter. I just posted a video to my Instagram yesterday showing that I already own, I already made one of these in a like burnt orange clay color with white, natural white um, yarn from Ottoman indigo and the cream is from Pearl Soho, the Goodwill. I held it double because it's a DK weight sweater. And so I really enjoy the fit of that and I like um, I like this yoke. It has the um, texture here and so I like round yet round yoke sweaters. Um, and so I decided I wanted to make another one, but I wanted a different color palette and I recently ordered and had some of this Cascade Heritage 7525 and it is um, really soft. I really like this and it was just, I would gotten it and I wasn't sure what I was going to make with it. I had kind of been thinking about my Sweet Shops blanket that I started. That I was going to do this as the main navy blue. But then as I was doing some of the squares, I realized I didn't love the process of knitting um, the Sweet Shops blanket. Um, and so I haven't advanced on that. And then, so it's, it was in my yarn stash and then I was doing some shuffling around and it ended up next to this other blue yarn, which got me thinking that I needed a two color circular color work yoke to work on and that's when the idea of doing a second sheep camp sweater came to mind. Uh, I like to do that every once in a while. Um, I have my um, yarn stash, I have it over there, and I organize it by weight. So like I have all of the fingering weight together and all of the DK weight together. And sometimes I organize the colors, but sometimes I like to like shuffle them around so that other colors, especially if I bring something new in, and then just seeing these two together, I love the idea of like a low contrast. This is a Primrose Yarn Co. And this is probably, this is Deep Stash. It has been in my stash for probably four years now. And this isn't even the original color. I went through a stint back when I did the first set of videos where I was dyeing yarn and I over dyed this one. And I think it was just it had speckles but it was mainly like maybe a silvery or like a cream main color and i was just having fun dyeing and so i over dyed this one and so the speckles still kind of pop out um in different spots where they were like thicker but the blue i wasn't very good at dyeing so it's kind of tonal which ends up being perfect as a contrast color with this blue. So I'm working on this. I split the sleeves and I am at the body. I'm starting to do the rib. Um, so some things I did off different than the first one, uh, which is one of the reasons I like doing a second pattern. Um, hold on one second. Um, so a couple of the things I did differently with this sweater than the first one. Um, on the back, the short rows are here. It's thicker. Um, based off of how the first one fits me, I added an extra row of short row shaping. 
to the back to add even just those two more there and back. Um, and make this a little bit deeper to help it lift the back up a little bit more and lower the front even more. And then another thing that I did, because this is super wash yarn, I knew it was going to grow. I reduced the amount of repeats of this by two because I was getting really close to the yoke depth that I wanted so that it wouldn't end up being super low in the armpit by where I split the sleeves. Um, so I did that. It has a shorter amount of repeats of this section of the pattern. There's no increases in that section, so it was easy to do. And then I went ahead and did this as well. And then like on the last one, on this one, I'm doing this section in reverse at the hem. So it's kind of bordered at the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna do the ribbing on the contrast color all the way down and then I'm going to do the same thing at the sleeves. I'm probably going to do the design and then do the sleeves, the cuffs in that color. So I do enjoy making a pattern for the second time, especially if I really like the first one because it allows me to modify it to fit even better and that's just, it's nice. When you're already familiar with the pattern, you know how it works and how it fits on your body because you've already made one. So you do that. So those are the projects that I'm working on and I really need to put the blue one aside. I've been working on that more and finish the sleeves on my daughter's little purple one. And finally we're gonna do the last little section which is dormant whips. Whips that I'm not working on but I'm gonna talk about them a little bit and new cast on projects that I'm planning on casting on here as soon as I finish some current ones. So my first dormant whip is the Traveler sweater by Andrea Mowry and I made it through the body and started the either back or front section, I'm not sure whichever she has you do first, and then just kind of lost interest. I think it's the stitch pattern and also the fact that it's bottom up. I don't think I've ever completed a bottom up sweater. Um, I just, I think it's the, the feel of the process. You do the body first, which just feels very blah. Then you come in and you do the yoke and then this, it's just the backwardsness of it. When I go top down, it just feels like you complete more. Like you get to the sleeves, you get to separate out the sleeves. And you can try it on at that point and see how it's fitting, which kind of keeps me motivated to keep going. So this is a dormant whip that I will keep you guys posted on on whether or not I pick it back up or I end up frogging it. Um, and then my next few cast-ons that I have planned, The once I finish my blue sweater, the next one I'm going to do is the swag by Caitlin Hunter. And I have some green yarn for the main color. Let me get a one with a label. And it is Rambouillet Merino. I bought this here in Japan. And it's a fingering weight. And it's not as soft as just a straight up merino. It has more texture to it. And also the um, the twist is really high. I think it's going to give me really high uh, stitch definition and then for the contrast color I have it balled up is a 50 gram mini from Q Loco Q Loco and then if I don't quite have enough I have a second one and these are from also a couple of years back she Q Loco did the birthstone each month they would do a full flight of minis, full set of minis um, for each one. And me being born in May, my birthstone is emerald. And so the one of the solid ones was the emerald. And then you had some speckled in between. And I still haven't used them all. Um, but so yeah, so this is going to be my contrast color for the color work and the lace. And if I don't have enough, I'm going to dip into this one, which should... If I start to run out, I'll probably switch back and forth between rows and then switch to this one. 
once this one runs out. But I'm super excited for the look that I'm going to get with this sweater. And a beef green sweater, I think, for March is kind of appropriate as we go into spring and St. Patrick's Day. And I love green. And I'm super excited about my green sweater. So this is my, I've got it ready to go. I've got it here in my little project bag that I made myself. It's a Halloween themed project bag, but I use it whenever and it's got orange. Just a basic little bag with a um, square bottom, which helps the yarn just kind of sit in there really nice. And it is currently holding a sweater's quantity and it's got a little bit of space at the top. I can take out some of the ones that I'm not currently, some of the extra stains, toss them in there later. But yeah, living in this little project bag that I made myself. And it's just ready to roll whenever I finish one of these two current whips that need to be done. And then the next, next thing I am due to cast on is I want a springtime cardigan. And I'm planning on making it out of this yarn, which is a wool cotton, Rambouille as well. And it is sixty percent cotton and forty percent wool. Nope, sixty percent wool, forty percent cotton. And so I think it's going to be really nice for summer. I started just a little gauge swatch with that same mock, see that mock stitch, and then I had to borrow the needle to make my daughter's cardigan. So I'll probably unravel this and redo this little swatch. I'm trying to decide what stitch I want to make my cardigan in. It's going to be a raglan um, v-neck with just a simple button band, no buttons probably. Probably do a little snaps so that I don't have to deal with buttonholes as I make it. I just need to figure out my stitch pattern because I had another, I have another swatch. Here comes a little buddy. I have another swatch and I want to, none of these are super exciting to me to make a whole sweater in. So I need to figure it out. I do like this one. A little but I don't know if I want a whole sweater with that stitch on it um so yeah so those are my I just threw cherry sorry those are my future cast-ons I have some other stuff that I want to um, have coming up that I want to talk about but I'm gonna have to wait until um, the next episode to talk about that um, got a couple of books that came in that I'm super excited to um, start using in my knitting um, especially my self-drafted patterns, I think will be really helpful. And I want to talk about those, but I'm going to need more time. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'll be back um, next Wednesday, hopefully um, every week, um, with my next episode. Um, if you do like this, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, comment down below. I probably need to do a section where I ask you guys a question with something to answer. I see other bloggers do it um, and it just kind of feels very natural where they're like, oh this is my dilemma. Comment what you think I should do and it just gets some interaction. So I probably need to do something like that. Um, if you have maybe a stitch recommendation of like a simple lace stitch um, for my gray cardigan, um, go ahead and leave it down below what the name of the stitch is um, or what stitch dictionary it um, came in so I can check it out. It might be just what I need. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Until then, I hope you have happy knitting and just that you're well. Thanks.